What's up, everybody? Welcome back to BSL 16, round of eight. Just got to see a pretty epic series between Mi Hu, the, uh, the Chinese terror Terran, and uh, Chao Chiji, which uh, Mi Hu ended up reigning supreme. And now we're gonna switch gears once again, go into John Hoon, uh, facing off against Zhao Shui, two of our uh, Chinese competitors here in an epic PVZ. And man, I don't know. It's gonna it's gonna have to meet some expectations to live up to the series we've seen of Ziki today. But uh, if anyone can can pull that off, it's definitely Zhao Shui. Yeah, Dirk or a lot of Chinese players have been telling me that Zhao Shui's best matchup is EVP. He's a very dangerous player. Yeah, but John Hoon, he's no slouch. Unfortunately for him, it doesn't seem like BSL 16 is his his tournament this time around for whatever reason. He's just not playing up to what you imagine John Hoon can play can play. So I actually am gonna favor Xiao Shui here simply because of what I've heard from the Chinese talking about how good he is. And also, you know, I played Xiao Shui and what I scan, which I thought was Mutas, all of a sudden was 10 lurkers at my natural. So this guy's obviously very sneaky. Yeah, very sneaky. He's got a, a lot of builds in his arsenal here. You you can never just assume with Zhao Shui and at the same time you know, as expected, he has that incredible Muta control, that impeccable Zergling control that you'd expect from Zergs at the highest of levels here. Um, so yeah, you, you can't really write off anything he does, um, you know, in, in this matchup in particular. Um, but yeah, it looks like the maps have already been vetoed here. It's going to end up being uh, Vermeer, Nemesis, and Sylphid, with Vermeer being uh, the map chosen for map number one here. Um, yeah, man, I'm really excited to get this one started and underway here. It should be a, a pretty epic series between these two. And I just want to point out, Machine, you see that second map? Nemesis uh, again. Yep. I know. <laughs> I actually can't believe that's slipping by. <laughs> I know. I just, the games are so weird. If I was John Hoon after the Zeke game, like, okay, that, that got a little too weird. Even if I wanted this as a map pick, uh, I, I would have vetoed it. But he's decided he wants to go with it again. And we are ready for game one, so let's go. And spawning top right as the blue Zerg, it is Zhao Shui. Yep, and in the bottom left, it, this is a mandatory win for him. Otherwise, he's probably gone. It is John Hoon. Cross map, Vermeer, a lot of space, a lot of bases. Uh, I mean, you know I always say it, but I, I these are my favorite positions for no other reason than the games just seem to be more epic, right? The chance, the, the likelihood of this going late game uh, is much more feasible just given the space these two have to work with here. Uh, so I, you know, I'm very pleased that Vermeer cross map is the way we're going to kick off this game number one here. Yeah, and Vermeer is you know, the new polypoid. You can have an epic game for sure. Also, every base has gas. So if you yep. do get into that game state where we're 30 minutes, you know, really, Protoss could have eight gases. That's nuts. What I like about crossbonds in particular is, you know, there's no chance of an Overlord intercepting the Zealot because that, that's just not going to happen. So there will be scenarios where, oh, a Zealot snuck by. Zerg missed it, it could deal catastrophic damage. Or, oh, Lings were hidden somewhere that you didn't suspect, and oh, run by in my main. The game could get really wild because of the lack of vision on the map. Absolutely. And this is going to be a 12 hatchery out of Zhao Shui. Wow. Um, I don't think you could have picked a better build given the positions. Um, honestly, 12 hatch, if you can get away with it, which you can cross map, it is just such a powerful boost to the Zerg economy. This is kind of like polar opposite from what we saw out of Zeki uh, this entire day today. Yeah, Zeki was really bringing it to the Protoss players, but Xiao Shui, at least for now, playing more drone heavy. We don't have a gas just yet, but we could see it around 2.30. Protoss is not going to be happy about the crossbond 12 hatch, that's for damn sure. But he may just take a fast nexus himself off of one zealot nope it is going to be two and i think you can wall yourself in there but it's a fake like you said yeah 
Yeah, he just wants those drones to be pulled off minerals, which is fine, honestly, for Zhao Shui. You got away with the 12 hatch. You know, you got to expect some kind of trade here. Protoss got to keep you a little honest. Um, and third drone moving out. I don't think this could get it. Never mind, it will be able to get a hatchery down. Um, but even a fourth drone going out to the third base here. Zealot is moving across the map, but, you know, cross positions like this, it just feels so, so late here. Well, it could it could throw Shao Shui off, though, because of how late it is. Like, well, if you went 9-gate or, you know, 10-gate, shouldn't the Zealot be at my base? But it's not there yet, so this could be an interesting dynamic of having a delayed Zealot, but one of them does get spotted now by the Overlords. That's well done. I love the pylon block. Look how much money Shao Shui was floating a second ago before putting down his third hatch, and actually he puts it down in his main, which you know for sure he did not want to do. That's a big mistake. I He had a drone towards the 12 o'clock position. I'm, I'm a little surprised he didn't just opt to take 12 o'clock. Um, yeah, there's no way Zhao Shui is happy with that hatcher inside the main here. And this is, even though it's only two Zealots and a Probe, <laughs> that army beats Zerg's army right now. He desperately needs to get rid of that Probe. That's a lot of DPS comboed with Zealots. But for now, he hasn't done anything about it. That's now three Zealots and a Probe. And now, I'm hoping to see that drones were not built at the natural, because if they are, this game is about to get turned on its head. Yeah. Oh, no. This is just... A shocker to me. Man. Dude, I, uh, what is Zerg's build? He has no gas still. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's no gas. There's a third hatchery inside the main. Yes, now we have an insane amount of lings, but I mean, the cat's out of the, the bag here. He knows exactly what he's up against. Um, good Zergling control, I will say. Uh, that was great. But still, there's a Zealot at the natural here. The natural completely undefended. Oh doesn't see this at all and suddenly John Hoon in such a powerful position here in this game one. Oh, this is an absolute disaster. You know, the last time I saw a build like this, I think it was Nemu. I don't know what BSL season it was, but he had like five or six hatches before gas. I mean, Protoss sees this from a mile away, so he's gonna just, oh my gosh, he even picks off that drone yeah. that was going to top middle. Oh man so painful you know what this looks like a doc holiday build that's what i think this <laughs> Ling looks man. like yeah Ling man with no gas <laughs> it's true i mean this is literally what doc holiday does is he just builds lings but there's the five hatches that i was still talking no about gas yeah there's still no gas is, is he gonna I mean, just go spore or something he's, it's almost he like will. he's trying not to take a gas at this point you know what i mean I, th like... I think he will go Spore, but but Protoss sees it. So Protoss is just going to go straight Citadel, man. And uh, this is... Uh, luckily, I guess, for Shao Shui is he's going to sack his Overlord and see that this guy skipped Stargate, so he's be able to cut his evolutionary, uh, left Evolution Chamber. So I guess that's good in that sense. At least he's going to know what's coming. But yeah, this is... This is a weird game already. Yeah, man, this is really bizarre. I, I can't say I've seen a ZVP look like this in years. Uh, but still, uh, I mean, it's 35 to, to 48, 49.50 supply here. There's a good amount of lings, but finally, Zhao Shui will be allowed to basically endlessly drone at this point. Um, and yeah, we're seeing that drone count spike here for Zhao Shui. Uh, so, I mean, if the eco is allowed to be just, just run away off the rails here, things could get a little difficult for uh, for John Hearn. Yeah, the, the drone to probe count is surprisingly close now, 36 to 30. It was like 22 to 12 a minute ago. So drone man in full force. He also is not supply blocked at all, so he could build some more drones if he want. He's gonna have a lot of hydras available to build also, and we do have John Hoon moving out, and those are Hydras, but the Zerglings don't have speed yet, so not really too worried about them. At least, I don't think John Hoon is too worried about them right now. No, but at the same time, yeah, Zealots don't have any speed either. Uh, never mind, they just finished. Uh, but we have a good amount of Hydras that should be completing, hopefully, with Hydra speed as well here. 
Um, and it looks like, yeah, John Hoon not immediately going to dive in there. Oh, Hydra Speed is not complete. Looks like Zealots are jockeying for position. There is no way he's breaking into this natural here. But the third does feel exposed. And here we go. Yeah, and I think Zhaoshua is going to need some drone drill. Yeah, plus one is just kicked in for the Zealots also. So they're just going to murder these links. But this is five hatch production. And even though the Hydras don't have speed, I mean, they're still going to be quite strong. But look at how much damage Zhaoshua or John Hoon has already oh. done. Oh, the drone drill was insane, insane. Body, blaking, body blocking for him. I think this could have been game-ending damage, but the, but the drones actually saved the day. Yeah, I, you know, he did lose a lot of drones for his efforts there, though. But still, I mean, the drone drill was absolutely necessary, and it was what he needed to, to try and hold here. Um, so very well done. And now there's plenty of Hydra, so I feel like Zhaoshui once again should be able to drone indefinitely but he needs to get an overlord to that third base you know he has to be aware that templar tech has to be out you know dark templar is very common and yeah we're seeing an overlord retreat to that base still no lair on the way from zhao shui here this is uh by far a uh, very bizarre drill Oh, Rayfill with the massive tip. Thank you so much Whoa. for supporting the BSL. And we've got a Let's big see. move out in the center of the map. Meanwhile, a DT at the third base, but it already got spotted, but not a lot of defense. So he's going to still be able to get a Hydra and so far two, three, three drones. Definitely mega worth. And Shaoshui, despite having all that larva available to him, doesn't have big eco. Whereas Jean Hoon, he has not missed the beat on his probes. He doesn't need to build anymore, in fact. He could just spam gateways and just produce units non-stop, which I think is exactly what he's doing right now. Still though, this is a wall. The Zealots aren't able to get the most purchase. Ah, but actually flanking Zealots moving into position here. And this is more than enough to fend off uh, Zhao Shui's Hydras here. Yeah, this is just way too many zealots for Hoover to do with but maybe with hydras at the bottom and good micro at the top side they'll be able to take them out but remember zergs i mean protoss still has plus one weapon so they're still hitting like a truck but maybe it is just way too many hydras right now but the issue for me is the lack of drones we're only on 29 and we have no lair and another dt is coming into that third base it's just a full committed timing here from Zhao Shui. There's no tech, like you said, no Evo chamber, no upgrades, no... I mean, this was a I'm gonna kill you with Hydralis or I'm gonna die trying. Well, I guess he's gonna have to make this work. I mean, this is a decent amount of, of Hydras and it was a, 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 it was a Templar cycle, but that's a good storm, but there's actually not that many Zealoth left over because it was a Templar cycle. Yeah. I, I mean, but still, though, in a matter of moments, it's going to be five, six storms here with cannon support, with Zealot uh, production as well. Dark Templar preventing any mining at the third here. Uh, I think John has positioned himself in a very strong position. Uh, I don't know. Like, storm is good, but this is a lot of hydras, but that was a really good storm. There, okay, there is three cannons here, and that Archon's actually soaking up a lot of shots while the cannons do work. And that storm definitely ended this push. Yeah, I mean, and there's no follow-up really out of Zhao Shui here. We don't have a layer. There's a Dark Templar still roaming the map, preventing any mining at your third. There's not many drones to be had. Uh, I, and we're seeing that in John Hoon's play now. He feels confident enough to move out on this map, uh, apply some pressure of his own. I mean, he's got upgrade advantage. He's got tech advantage. He's got eco advantage uh Zhao Shui is in a very difficult spot here yeah this is probably gonna be the last ditch effort from him he's got a counter attack going towards the natural but there's still just so many zealots here and that's not even the entire army of of Protoss. obviously the hydras in the center of the map get absolutely murdered and now we have almost doubling the supply yeah almost double the supply still dt alive on the map as well should be able to get a little bit of a flank here. I mean, third Nexus on their underway here for John Hoon. He's just not concerned with anything. Yeah, and this counterattack by Protoss most likely going to kill the third base. And once that falls, I think just what we have on the map for Zerg is probably going to be the last ditch effort. That was a pretty good storm dodge, but 
there's just too much production at this point. There's a drone cycle. Well, this is way too late for that. Finally, a lair. It's halfway done. But he has he has nothing. He has no mutas, no lurkers. How do you ever start stop, you know, seven or eight gate Protoss without either of those? You don't. Is the short answer, <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, there's just too much here. Zaushui, great effort, right? He's really doing what he can to apply pressure and try to make some semblance of a game here. But honestly, John it was all John Hoon even from the start. I mean, that delay on the third, the the hold of that Hydra timing, uh, the Zealot harass, man, he, uh, you know, he's playing so, so well here against Zaushuai. Yeah, we finally see Goon starting to be produced. Okay, that's... Okay, he at least got the storm off and gets two kills. But uh, Archons have some... One of them has 17 kills, and that's basically pure Hydras, you know that, so that's a lot of damage. Very, very worth. We've got a creep colony, more sunkins trying to defend the natural, but there's no bus coming, so just wasted money for him while John Hoon just takes more bases. This is just. It's 56 to 134, Machine. Like, what can you really yeah, say at you, this point? There's there's not much you could say, man. I, I can't even fault John Hoon for backing up on the map, right? Like, this is BSL. This is. He's not in a great spot in these groups. He needs each and every single one of these wins he can get. So don't take a risk. Back up. Know that you're, recognize that you're on a better eco advantage and just play to that strength. Here we go. He's going to trap Zerg's army with this. And this yeah. should be the end. Yeah, and you can't even buy time, you know, with like a lurker morph to soak up hits or anything. This is just the decimated army we're going to have. He's going to, well, in League, they have a, a saying, Flame Horizon, your opposing laner, which means you're up 100 CS. That's exactly what John Hoon did. He Flame Horizon there, 40 supply to 140. Just absolutely brutal game. Yeah, man, that was uh, that was a tough one. That's, I mean, hell of a wake up call there, honestly, for for Zhao Shui. He is absolutely going to need to change some some things up here to to stand a chance in game number two because. One was just all, all, all John Hoon from the start. Yeah, and we're finally getting to see John Hoon play to the level that we expect to see him play because that was just right from the get go. The first three zealots, there was no point in that game afterwards where Chao Shui had a chance at all. Like, like you said about the probe, the probe, I think the probe actually did more damage than anything else in that game. Zerg never wants to have a third hatch in their main, like, never ever. So that was really brutal. And Chao Shui. Even though this is his pick, do you really want to risk your BSL life here on Nemesis? I don't know about that. I don't know if you, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be feeling confident, especially after game one with John Hoon and uh, Zeke, right? Or game two, rather. Um, I mean, you never like to see a Protoss that's actively trying to counter uh, and uh, cannon rush third bases and stuff on a map like Nemesis. It's just tedious. It's very you know micro intensive it's difficult to work with so i i don't i think this actually is uh going to be a difficult map here for for zhao shui uh especially after that game one uh play because i mean it, it's even more difficult to hold a third base when none of your units can get to it <laughs> you know yeah. yeah but with this uh looks like our players are ready to go folks it's going to be john hoon facing off against zhao shui game two on Nemesis. And spawning bottom left of Nemesis as the red Protoss, it is Jean Hoon. And in the blue, in the top right, it is Xiao Shui. And we still haven't seen Muta Man on this map machine. You think maybe? We could finally get Muta Man here. I hope so, man. It, it's absolutely one of the strengths of the map, right? You know, when we were watching the the previous series between you know Zeke and John Hoon, we were talking about the big advantage is there's really only one entrance Protoss can attack you from if you do it right, and that's going to be your natural. Um, you know, as long as you're good about getting around the map and clearing those assimilators, clearing those eggs. 
uh, you know, doing your chores, you, this can be a very difficult map uh, for Protoss to just engage in a head-up battle, right? And what are you going to do? Just make a lot of zealots and just single file, run them into sunken spore lurker? No. Um, you know, so it, things like mutilists that are allowed to, uh, I guess, just bypass all of those walls, dive straight into the main, prevent third bases, uh, you know, it, it, they could be very, very strong here. And this is also a map where every single base has a Vespian geyser. So getting the necessary Vespin, Vespian that you'd need for something like Mass Muta or Muta Play uh, is very possible here. Well, I hope we do see it because, I mean, you've seen me play ZVP a few times, and I also play Muta Man. I think it's just super troll, super funny when you have just a billion Mutas kill 10 Corsairs. But it is very hard to make work, so we'll see if that's what Shao Shui wants to go for. We do have, again, another 12 hatch opener from him. This time around, it was a 10 gate for John Hoon, but he did get unlucky here because, again, it's another cross spawn. Yeah, really unfortunate once again, and it's also going to be another hatch first from Zhao Shui. Now, we remember this still ended up playing out somehow in uh, John Hoon's favor, but you know you you can't be happy um, either way. In in general, when you normally see these two builds match up, yeah, we do have the zealot moving out, and the drone did scout the gateway, so he knows that okay, I don't have to worry about a fake ca or a, a cannon rush because that can't happen. So he is actually going to take a third base at the natural bottom right, and I always love this type of play. It reminds me of Larva, who is obviously the king of this style i don't think i've ever seen him lose when he plays this style and generally it sets up for a huge macro game yeah i mean it just allows you to take essentially a, a free fourth base which you'd always love um you know that being said he's got two points to defend just, uh does zao shui the natural is going to need to be defended as well as bottom right but on this map i think it's less likely that John Hoon will scout bottom right anytime soon. Well, he do have a probe going to mid right, right? So he's going to try and get into the main and see, okay, did this guy go fast gas or, you know, potentially could a cannon rush like we saw him do versus Zeke, but it's not there. So he may be thinking that, hmm, maybe you took top middle instead. So, oh, actually he's going bottom right. Is he? He is. Wow. Yeah, he absolutely is. So, uh, what a call. Honestly, I, I'm a little surprised he was able to make that call, but won't be scouting 12 o'clock. It looks like he's just going to go bottom right, uh, and he will be rewarded. Oh my gosh, and he's building it he's outside of range. This is bizarre. I mean, this has got to be some type of just full zealot committal here yeah. out of uh, John Hoon to get anything done. Yeah, yeah there's he, no core. Uh, he knows there's way too many lanes for the cannons to be in range of the hatch, so what he's going to do is just build cannons outside of range and then push with the zealots to actually kill this base. This is, this is, this is, I like this. But This is next level. I have not seen this. Well, what does make me a little worried is seeing these overlords. You know, I, I watched some PVZ videos of Harang, Harangi, or Har Har Harang 2, and he's talking about how when you see overlords in position like this, you're going to be getting Hydra buses. So I may be worried about Hydras coming pretty soon, but uh, not the case, obviously. And we do have a Zealot move out. There's so many Zerglings here, though, from Zhao Shui. I don't know, it just feels like he's able to constantly put this pressure on. Cannon does finalize, but there's no wall. Yeah, this is completely open. If if speed was already kicked in, 100% he's running through there and just killing Protoss. So this was very risky from John Hoon to move out like this, especially with no wall. But he's going to get rewarded because bottom right is dead. I think two cannons plus three zealots to help support. I mean, you're just not busting that with links. Yeah, no way. No chance. And I mean, even the drone's going to be cleaned up here. He is making more links. Maybe, ah, yeah, there's just no chance. Wow, what a weird play here from John Hoon. But it ends up being absolutely the right call here. And suddenly, Zhao Shui gonna need to get something done with his uh, Spire play here. Yeah, those zealots. Well, 
I was going to say those zealots need to be swapped out because they're heavily damaged, but we did build another cannon at that position, and that's weird because that's, you know, more minerals that... Okay, well, he needed it because actually Link's going to actually come and try and save this. It's way too many, too many zealots. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, it looks like Hatchery just going to fall as well. Um, so Zhaoshui definitely on the back foot here once again. Yeah, Zhaoshui's drone to probe count isn't that bad, but two hatch, that's all the larva you have. It pretty much puts you all in at this point. We saw that the tech is fire, so he's going to have mutas, but that's a stargate in Zhaoshui's main. And the fact that there's still no hydras, I imagine he knows at this point that it could only be mutas. Yeah, it it has to only be mutas at this point. Oh man, John Hoon just getting incredible trading here uh, with these remaining zealots as well. Oh, probe even <laughs> sneaks into the main. Going to confirm. Yep, of course. it's just two base fire play here. Yep. So perfect scout from John Hoon. His probe count is extremely low for seven minutes. I mean, a lot of times this is when Protoss doesn't need to build any more probes at all because they're sitting at around like 40 or so. 40 or so. So he did cut a ton for this, but he's still fine because he has the perfect unit comp for what Zerg is doing. Yeah, he's building up that Corsair count, it looks like. Second Stargate just now completing as well. Uh, I mean, he's just gonna, what, build like seven, eight Corsair and then just go try to kill Zhao Shui, likely. Yeah, and, and Zhao Shui didn't even spot the second Stargate, so for now he thinks it's just one Stargate, which is, you know, already hard enough, but when this guy goes into 12 star, uh, twelve Corsairs with plus one, and all you've got are, you know, Muta Scourge, probably not even that many Scourge, there's just going to be almost no counterplay. He should be able to get these Zealots picked off for free. That's one thing. But man, look at the drone count. It, it, it main's pretty well saturated. The natural is very light. Well, the Zealots do end up dying, so this was a good pickoff from Chao Shui. And then if you were looking at the supply only, you would think, well, Zerg's in a fine position, 58 to 51. That's manageable. The, the probe count is still extremely low. We have no gateways, I do also want to point out. This is very awkward. And actually, I guess Zerg isn't in as bad of a position as I thought, simply because what does Protoss attack with? Yes, you have Sayers, but what actually kills Zerg, right? We don't have any gates. Sayers. Sayers oh, will Sayers? kill Zerg. Even Sayers? They'll kill That's it? Yeah, you think I'm joking. Sayers will just straight up kill Zerg here. It's Muta, not that many Scourge. And yeah, Corsairs can't attack ground. They can attack air, and that includes Overlords, though. I mean, sometimes you get in these abysmal situations where you just can't build any units as Zerg. And I think well, there's a chance we get into one of those. I think, yeah, I think you're right because I noticed Zerg has no armor upgrade, but Protoss has plus one. And he's just counterattacking, so this is it. This is, we're going for the Hail Mary counterattack. Look how fast those Scourge die. We're, we're already supply blocked and the battle hasn't even happened yet. So this is it, Zhao Shui risking it all on one counterattack, he's got eight mutas. There's not that many cannons, but it just doesn't matter. There's, you know, it's not 20 mutas. If it was 20 mutas, maybe there's a world where this can work, but there's just not enough. Yeah, I mean, it's just not enough to dive on any of the cannons, unfortunately. Oh. He's got to try to keep every muta alive at this point. I mean, there's just no overlords. They're going to continue to be no overlords. He was, at, he was 55 out of 11. Now he's 55 out of 59. That means he just built six overlords all at what once. Was he? I already <laughs> forget. <laughs> and, because he he only, and he could, could only build four units. And then he's instantly supply blocked again. Man. John Hoon getting it done after another unorthodox start there, man. That that forward cannon positioning, I, I was I thought for sure Zhao Shui was gonna overwhelm it. He wasn't being greedy. It's not like he was over droning or, or anything, it felt like. Um he had plenty of lings, but man, John Hoon just uh one step ahead, it felt like. Yeah, and clearly if you're Zerg and playing versus John Hoon on Nemesis, you need to track that probe, man. You think he's gone? He ain't. He's in the shadows. 
waiting to strike. Oh, I love it, man. In the shadows, waiting to strike. There he is! <laughs> That's there him! There he is! That's the probe. Yeah, they gave that probe sights just because it's John Hoon's, you know? <laughs> They're like, you're no ordinary probe here. <laughs> Oh boy, so yeah, that's uh, that's actually going to be our final match here for the day. Got to see some, uh, you know, uh, some adjustment in, in these results here. Ziki taking a couple of wins uh, on the board here. Uh, Chao GG with a couple of really difficult matchups, unfortunately. Uh, we got to see Mihu, uh, you know, win another TDP as well there. Um, Zhao Shui unfortunately falling to John Hoon and John Hoon with a uh, pretty strong win obviously against Zhao Shui. So man, what a day. Uh, things are still shaking up here and we're, I mean, every single player we were talking about it has, has really been fighting so strong in this tournament. There's not a single player that's just being blown out. I mean, each and every single one of these series have been very, very competitive here. Uh, you know, between all of our players. So, man, this is this has just been nuts. Yeah, I agree. And I think there's only like one person confirmed right now to make it out, which is me. Is uh, yeah, I mean, he's four and one. But everybody else, if they went on a bad streak, could go like three and four, and then we have some weird playoff scenario. Uh, John Hoon winning there, he's at now two and four. So he's one of the people that could go three and four. Uh, he still needs to definitely win his last match but now it's you know way more manageable than one one in four that's for sure yeah yeah absolutely man um ziki also picking it up at the end as well uh still jockeying to to make it into that next round of play um but yeah man this is uh this has been an exciting one today uh before we call it for the day though we definitely want to shout out to our patreon uh donators here um, so yeah, once again, if you guys love what you're watching here, love supporting uh, Foreign Brood War here, consider uh, donating to the Patreon. Um, you know, each and every single one of these donations goes, uh, you know, very far at, at helping us continue uh, BSL season after season. Um, but yeah, special thank you to the, uh, at the bombastic general level, $100 a month, we have Star Lover. At the Bombastic Colonel level, $50 a month. Uh, we have Striker, Believe in Zero, My Fleeting Dream, Ver Rev, and Hashed Fuzzy. Thank you very much. Uh, at the Major Plus level, we got Tim, Cause, and Tupocalypse, Robert Groot, and Nientek. Thank you all so much for your support. And at the $20 a month level, we have Suricata, On My Way, Gordon Bradley, KJ, Daniel Lopez, LML, and Quark. Thank you all so much for donating at that $20 a month level. Uh, but yeah, if you guys are looking to donate your, yourselves, head on over to patreon.com slash bombastic. Uh, each and every single donation, big or small, uh, helps us out so, so much and helps Zero continue BSL season after season here, folks. So uh, please continue to show your support here. Yep. Yep. And you got to remember also at the $10 level or above, you get all the replays of BSL. So definitely consider doing so if you want those replays. I got those and, replays, man. Oh, yeah. You got them all, man. You're going to see how freaking Zeke plays, and you're going to be the next Zeke next season. I know it. Yeah. Yep. That's uh -huh. that's you. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. I'll be in pro league. Watch out, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, right on, we'll be... Well, before we go, I got a announcement, which is we know ASL is coming up in two days from now, and people wanted me to cast. So actually, I will be casting ASL. It's super early in the morning, so I'm fixing, fixing my sleep schedule. But this time around, I will be joined by Eon Zerg. So you guys out there that were wanting some Zerg analysis and not just bias Terran analysis by me and Scan, you should definitely consider tuning in. But if you're not able to catch ASL, because I know it is super early in the morning, uh, hopefully we just see you next week in BSL and we get to finish the round of eight. Right on, man. I'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> yep, it'll be exciting. So either way, I'm going to see you next week or at ASL, hopefully. So take care, guys, and we'll be seeing you soon. See you, everybody. <laughs>